Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures, and as promised for those of you that were interested, which I would assume is a few of you, because I know I am, today we're going to take a look at the new City State Hoplites from Parabellum Games for part of their conquest, Last Argument of Kings, and I mean these dudes, these dudes are looking pretty good, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking the guys in the back, especially. I'm still kind of sore that I did not get a hold of any of those um, faction taster preview models, but this at least should keep me busy for a bit. As always, to note, always take a look at these boxes before popping them open because oftentimes they will have some special labels, like the fact that this is a dual kit and you can make the phalangites. So here we see the hoplites with their thick spears. Whereas those are still hoplites on the back, so that doesn't really help. Can I get the box open? I can! Oh, that's new. What's this? Our apologies in advance for what you will see with the enclosed sprues. Due to a mold defect, there is a little extra plastic at the sprue frame. This does not impact any of the parts for the miniatures themselves. You know, no one Okay, well, that was nicer than to include this. Well, forgive them for their poor <laughs> cutting job later, but that's okay. Alright, so, bag of bases, which is to be expected. Good, we're seeing the return of the numbered parts. I like that. I like seeing that. I, I don't know what's going on here. Is this what they mean by the extra plastic? Lots of helmet pieces. I have a funny feeling that if you don't necessarily use these helmets, they're going to make some interesting conversion fodder for other projects. Yeah, see what they mean? I guess that's what they're talking about, the extra plastic there by my index finger here. It's got other extra plastic stuck on it now. Yay, thank you for this. After building the Valkyries, where everything had like a specific body and nothing numbered and just kind of maybe it was and I just never noticed trying to figure everything out that was kind of a pain okay I got two of the four bodies is that intended I don't know okay that's obviously for the commander are all those parts going to be his helmet I don't know we'll take a look at that naturally Okay, these sprues are all the same. Maybe those are bonus figures. Here's one, two, and three. With the shield arms, I guess not. So, what, we have three... I'm assuming three bodies, because there's three sprues. So that's nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That sounds right, doesn't it? Oh, okay. All is good in the world. These are all sprue fours. Okay. So those guys are just their own sprue for now. And the command sprue. So everything is accounted for. I don't see any other issue really other than the sprue four being excessively plastic. Take a look at this some more. One of the nice things about these bodies is despite the fact that they are all kind of, you know, uniquely designed for their, you know, constituent parts, and they are, in fact, numbered all the way through, the parts lineup doesn't conflict with any of the other ones, so you might not accidentally glue a leg on the wrong body, for example. I mean, this torso and leg is only going to go with the other third one. It's not going to fit with the number one at all. So, good to see. Four different shield designs. I don't think there was a shield on the fourth one, was there? Maybe there was. I don't know. How many spears we have? We got some really long spears. And some extra long spears. So here you can see the flangites. The big difference looks to be the length of the spear. They're both going to be wearing the capes. They're both going to be 
having robotic parts everywhere. Here you can see the breakdown for the leader heads. So we have each pose actually broken down. That's interesting to see. And that does make me wonder if the heads are set kind of like with the um, Valkyries. Everything kind of had a preset head that was going to match with the body, which I thought was kind of cheesy. I want to be able to mix and match. Not that there's going to be a huge variety, I think, in terms of how these bodies are going to look in the end. I am 100% building them as hoplites. I, I do not want to deal with those big, long, massive spears. No, thank you. All right, well, maybe one. <laughs> maybe one like that. But he just looks so much cooler with the shield, I think. Of course, the shields are going to be a lot easier. No, not easier. The flangites are going to be a lot easier to paint because you don't have to mess with the shields. But you know what? I don't care. I'm going to start building them. And I will happily show you guys how they turn out in just a sec if you sit tight. Okay, we got some of the hoplites done. And yeah, I know the gray of the plastic makes it difficult to see, but I really like their cybernetic parts here. And just the, the overall tech level of their gear. It's cool. And I mean, I, I bet you can get away with just painting these guys like fully as automatons if you really wanted. Now, I would advise against building them completely, and I obviously did that. Uh, and I would love for everybody to learn from my mistakes, naturally. But sometimes you just have to do these things. Part of the issue I had was, so the arms, the, the right arm, the main arm, the weapon hand, um, they're all about the same in terms of pose and posture. You know, the bodies are very distinct in that, you know, they're all going to be kind of aimed a certain direction. And considering this is supposed to be a dual kit, well, you know, you need to make sure, especially if you're going to build the phalangites, you got to have them with their big giant spears. And I mean, when I think hoplites, I think guys with big giant spears. But anyway, um, you know, so the variance I think you're going to get is more based on the heads, the shields, and the hands. Because everybody's going to be kind of in the same generic pose, but that's kind of to be expected with a tabletop game, you know, when you think about it. So these are the three main bodies, and then I actually have one that was in the process of building. And my first thought was, can I build these? Because obviously you want to paint the cloaks. And the cloaks are two pieces, the front and the back. Um, my thought was, can I get the bodies built and then still be able to attach the cloak and the head? So the head with the crests make things way too big, and that doesn't really work. So you do have this at ease body. That's what we had all the extra ones laying around in the container of the box. And I don't know what happened. I'm going to have to go back and review the first part of this video. I can't find my command sprue with the leader's shield on it, which isn't the end of the world, but it's still kind of annoying. It also had the headdresses. But I figure, you know, even if I can't find it, I've got, like, the resin dude. I can just slap him on the base if I want and call it a day. I do still want to get the two-player version just for the completionist's in me's sake, although I do like that version with the blade, and my blade was really floppy, and I tried heating it up, and it didn't work. But this body's kind of cool, uh, and this kind of got me realizing what we could do with it. So you do have one of the flangite spears as well. Uh, the arm actually has a separate hand on its own, but all of the other shield hands are just going to go like so. So I would suggest you build the bodies, and one of the interesting things, so I did build some of the flangites, and we'll talk about them here. Uh, you can see, so they've got these crazy long spears, and unfortunately I don't have anything else in my collection that has such long spears because I can't stand them because I know I will break them. So I've stayed away from like all the Victrix, Warlord, the Macedonians, things like that, the, the Greeks. Uh, all those plastic kits that tend to have really long spears because I know I'm going to break them. But, I mean, these aren't too bad. But then again, given the size of the Conquest models, I mean, you got to keep that in perspective. So one of the things I figured out, 
I hate trying to get weapons that are in both hands aligned. It's a pain and it never works the way I want it to. So what I realized is what you do is you want to glue the pole together. And I think this is my first try just gluing, putting a little bit of glue and then going ahead and trying to line everything up. It didn't work out. Okay. I mean, you can see, but again, I'm, I'm going to be really nitpicky and critical about this. And I'm sure there's those of you out there who are going to smooth it over and, you know, fill in those gaps and sprue goo it up and things like that. What you want to do is glue the two parts of the haft of the spear, let it dry, and then you can plug in the ball jointed hand. And then all of the guys have this little nub for an arm which is either going to attach, you know, the left forearm with a shield or the left part of the longer spear. That worked out a whole lot better. So, as you can see, this one, a little bit smoother to the point, I'm not sure where it even attached. I literally don't know where I glued it together now. I think maybe under the hand there? I don't even know. So yeah, I figured that out. Once you, you know, glue the arms, let it dry, plug this in, this just boop, lands right on top. You can see a little bit of the differentiation here among the heads as well. So your hoplites have the full crest with the hair, whereas the phalangites have just a little blade, some bladier than others. Look at this little nub, I don't like it. And believe it or not, they do actually manage To get themselves reasonably attached to the base. Well, you're not part of the. I didn't finish a full four man phalangite unit because the fourth body is going to be the guy to stand back there holding the spear. Like, yeah, come on, guys, let's do it. All right, come on. Great job, folks. Also, of note is the connection point for the head takes both heads. I've had a few kits lately where I've been really scratching my head. What a bad pun, but it was intended. As to where and which heads go with which bodies, the Nord uh, Valkyries in particular. That was kind of annoying, but these guys, anything goes. <laughs> anything goes with the Phalangites. But yeah, my only gripe, like I said, is the poses tend to get very samey. Or you gotta have guys that are going to end up in strange positions. I guess he's like blocking an overhead blow because you're only gonna be looking at the back of the shield from that particular position. And again, I think the main variance is really gonna come from the guys with the shields, the hoplites, the phalangites with their big giant spears. There's not a whole lot of variance you're gonna get. I don't think, and I didn't try, and this is bad on my part, and I should have, but I didn't. I should have tried just gluing some of these extra arms and then trying to plug them in the bodies and see what happens. But I didn't. I didn't try. So you can see here just between the hero model and a basic hoplite. A little bit fancier armor. I guess a more high-tech spear for the hero model whose name is escaping me. Way bigger crest on the helmet. And a bit of a fancier shield, too. Of course, if you give this guy a sword, that changes things up. Now, my first thought upon building all these guys, and I've had this bumbling around in my head, and, you know, I can't sanction any of your guys' buffoonery if you wish to indulge in a similar fashion, but I keep thinking these are going to be perfect for playing a game of, of Gods and Mortals. I've been wanting to play that again. It was a game um, that Andrea of Ganesha Games did for Osprey using a similar rule set to Song of Blades and Heroes. Because, I'll be honest, I have not found anybody interested in playing Conquest locally. Painting and building? Sure. Playing? Yeah, not so much. I bang the camera there. But when you see these guys, like... I, I keep thinking, you know, Greco-Romans... Well, why not have them fighting Gauls and Celts and stuff like that? And then I can bust out some of the other fun models I've got. There's a bit of a size discrepancy here, and they both have similarly sized bases. This isn't an actual conquest base. 
Not that it makes a huge difference. I mean, the Victrix guy on a nicely sized base is still barely coming up to his torso. Romans decide to pillage some of the Greek uh, archaeotech laying around on the islands. They ain't having it, obviously. I don't know what kind of fun scenarios you guys can come up with. Like I said, I keep thinking of gods and mortals throwing in some of the the drones from the Slain game. Slane, however you want to pronounce it. I heard Pat Mills say Slain, so I'm going to go with his since he wrote the friggin' book. But anyway... I don't know. I, I'm just like rambling about possible fantasy games. But like I said, you can see there's just a huge difference if you wanted to like throw these guys in with historicals. But on the other hand, if you wanted to customize some of these up for a game of, like I said, of gods and mortals, I think that'd be really cool. You'd have these like larger than life super warrior types, almost fantasy versions of space marines or something. Speaking of space marines, if you wanted to ultramarine these guys up, I don't know. They might be interesting fodder for such a thing. If you're into that. With a couple of other Conquest models. We've got Handy. Old Dominion Ziliarch. One of their plastic heroes. So right, these guys look kind of short. But then again, they're not all fully standing up right here. Let's get like one of the Phalangites who's at least... Even his spear proudly. I would have expected these guys to be a little larger. Surprisingly, they're they're kind of shorter than their compatriots here. Maybe they're just better bred in the city-states and they have no use for brawny might that all these other fantasy kingdoms are having to, you know, invest so heavily in their stocky warriors. Or maybe I'm just making it up as I go along. What do I know? But just to give you a good size variance there. Do we have any other interesting models laying about? Of course. Our Wadroon friend doesn't look too big in comparison, but he's kind of hunched over as well. If we grab, like, the Predator here. I think that's what he was called, wasn't he? I haven't finished my Chieftain yet, unfortunately. He's being worked on. There we go. Let's brighten things up. Still bigger. Hmm. I'm trying to help you poor city statesmen, but you're not doing much to help your, your cause here. Even the Norn towers over him. She's looking down on him. Interesting. Again, the Norn being a... That's a Norn Volva. And one of their trolls. There's just some fun, interesting models in the Conquest line. And, and one of the things I really appreciate about it as we've had such variety, and it's in plastic. Maybe not as modular as I would hope, but, you know, I, I think in terms of versatility of what you can do with these guys and how you're going to use them, I mean, if you, are you going to make a big block of them? They might make for an interesting kind of mythical unit, something in Kings of War where you can kind of stagger a lot less of them on the base and not have to have so many models. Uh, if you're like me and you want to have, like, economical Kings of War games... Something to consider as well there. And, like I said, this is just the first of the city-state infantry plastic kits. Um, we have seen previews and should see more of their stuff coming soon. I know they had, like, the guys with the swords and the shields. And I think there was something else coming, but... Rest assured, sooner or later on this channel, we'll probably see the plastics. Because I like them, and I'll keep painting them, and... Eventually, fingers crossed, they may get used for their intended purpose. But I feel like I've been saying that since the beginning of this channel. And it's been a while now, and it still hasn't happened. But at least they're going to get painted, and they will get played somewhere. So we'll, we'll, we'll spin that positively. If you haven't had a chance to check out Conquest on your own, though, do take a look. All the rules are free. You can take a look on the website. It's got actually instructions on how to build all the kits as well. And there are plenty of pretty pictures of both painted models and sprue layouts if you're a weirdo like me and likes looking at pictures of untouched, unmarked plastic on sprues because, yeah, who knows? Why not, right? Anyway, with that said then, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.